Hi everybody, I'm Amy and welcome back to another tutorial. So in today's tutorial I'm actually going to be talking about solvents and obviously just going over what a solvent is, why it's used by artists and how it's used. So just a quick safety warning if you're using a solvent, whether that is a blending fluid or mineral spirits, possibly even odourless mineral spirits, paint thinners, you must always ventilate your room. So open up a door or a window, make sure that you have enough fresh air coming into your space because what you don't want to do is start breathing in any fumes, any chemicals that are given off by the solvents. Also you could use a face mask for extra protection if you wanted to and you should always wash your hands after you have used a solvent because you might have some solvent residue you know on your hands you don't want to then ingest that by putting your hands in your mouth or eating drinking or even rubbing your eyes so I'm actually using the Prismacolor pencils, these are a wax based pencil so they blend really really well together and they also work really well with a solvent. But you could use any wax based pencils, so you could use the Caran d'Arche Luminance, the Arteza pencils and also oil based pencils like the Faber-Castell Polychromos are going to work really well with a solvent as well. And the pencil blend that I am using is the Zestit pencil blend which is a solvent. And you can also use this not only with wax based and oil pencils, but also pastels as well. Solvents work really well with pastels if you wanted to blend those pastels out even further. So obviously it just has all the information on the pot there, but that is the solvent that I'm going to use. And I like using this solvent because it has quite a nice citrusy odor to it. And I just prefer using this one uh, to other solvents. So that's why I use the Zestit pencil blend. And as I said, I'm going to be using that with the Prismacolor pencils. So in terms of paper, I would actually say the best type of paper to use would be watercolour paper. That's the most preferable because watercolour paper is slightly thicker. So as you're using a solvent, that is a wet medium. So with wet mediums, you're going to want to use paper that can absorb that wet medium. If you use too thin paper, then the solvent will go through. You could start to tear your paper. It can damage the tooth of the paper as well. So I'm actually using... Um, cold pressed watercolour paper for this demonstration. Quite often see on watercolour paper, any brand that you get, it will either say cold pressed or hot pressed. That basically just means that hot pressed is a smoother texture, cold pressed is more textured. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just using some cold press watercolour paper and this is £140 which is the recommended minimum thickness of paper that you should go for if you're using a wet medium like solvents or watercolours. All I'm going to do is just use the side of that pencil starting with the lightest layer and I'm going to just briefly shade that in like so. Obviously you can turn the side of the pencil to retain its sharp point as well. And you can tell that I've used the cold press paper because there is a grainier feel to this, but it doesn't matter. The solvent is going to obviously blend that all out. So just going over that a few times, I just wanna make sure that I build enough layers. So that is a common mistake that a lot of people make. They either apply too much pencil, so too many layers of pencil down, or they apply too little pencil down. And that is not going to be effective for using a solvent. You've got to get a right balance. So I would say between five and seven layers of pencil is a good amount. So just going in again, I'm applying this very lightly with the side of my pencil. You don't want to apply too much pressure because if you do that, then you're going to burnish that colour into the paper and then the solvent won't, won't work. Just going to add in this sort of orangey tone here. So again, all I am doing is just using the side of that pencil to fill in the white grain here. use some red just to give this circle a little bit of depth this brown as well 
it doesn't matter what colours you use if you're just practicing using a solvent. I'm just using these colours because I just thought it was easier for me to use them. So you can see that I've applied a few layers now. This is probably my fifth layer that, of pencil that I've applied. That's probably enough pencil now that I've laid down. That's probably five to seven layers of pencil. And now I'm actually going to use the Zest It Pencil Blend. So obviously I've just taken the lid off of the pencil blend and I'm going to use a rounded brush head. So talking a little bit about the paint brushes that you should use or are best to use. I wouldn't recommend using an angled brush like that because it's going to be very hard for you to get into all of the areas that you need to. So it's probably best for you to use a rounded brush head. Also, you don't want to be using a brush that is really, really scratchy either, very sort of hard bristles, because you might get some unpleasant lines in your actual drawing or whatever it is that you're doing with the solvent. So I actually like to use this brush or one of these brushes like this with the rounded brush head, soft bristles, and it just makes for easy blending. So all I'm going to do is just dip this paintbrush into the solvent you don't need loads and loads and loads and I have a kitchen towel here so I'm just gonna dab off any excess that I have like so again I have the door open and then you can actually start to blend that colored pencil out so I'm using circular motions. I'm not applying a lot of pressure because I want this solvent to do most of the work. Switching over the paintbrush as well. And it doesn't matter whether you start from the center or you start from the outside. Just do what is best for you. Oops. Dabbing it in dabbing it off For the solvent, most of your blending should be done on the first application of solvent. So you can be a little bit more generous the first time that you apply solvent. So I'm obviously applying quite a bit of solvent. And then for every layer of solvent that you use after that, you should use less and less solvent. Because what you don't want to do is damage the tooth of that paper by going in with heavy, heavy wet mediums. And going in circular motions is the best thing for you because circles have no sides, no corners. So it means that you're going to be going in one continuous circle around. And that's obviously going to mean that you don't get start and stop lines in your drawing. I'll go a little bit slower so you can see how I'm doing that. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do that because then what's going to happen is you're going to get the stop and start lines in your drawing. So circular motions or even just going in one direction like so. So that is actually done for the solvent. Obviously as I'm using more textured paper it's going to have a grainier look but it doesn't matter just for the purpose of this tutorial it doesn't really matter what paper I used but you can see how that's blended out and also it's really nice to see the red and the oranges all blended in together as well. You're going to want to leave this for about 
15 to 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour to dry because what you don't want to do is now start going in with coloured pencils whilst that solvent is still wet. But that is going to cause you problems because you want to make sure that it is dry before you go back in with those coloured pencils. You don't want to then start damaging the teeth of the paper by applying really hard pressure with the coloured pencils. Okay, so I've waited about 15 minutes for the solvent to dry, but you just want to feel if it feels dry. If it feels the slightest bit damp, wait a little bit longer. So that feels dry. I did this one about five minutes after that one, so I'm going to still let that one dry for another five minutes. But what I want to show you now is how you can then add more layers and what you should do about blending those layers out. So again, I'm just using the side of the pencil and just applying that very, very lightly. And as I said, when you apply more solvent to the paper, you want to use less and less and less for every application of solvent you use after the first application. So this is just to show, you know, how you can sort of hype up that contrast, that vibrancy in colours as well just put a bit of brown in there as well no hard pressure at all this is just the side of the pencil very very lightly the solvent will do the work so I'm using a little bit less I'm letting some of that go back into the actual pot I'm just gonna dab off any excess so there really is hardly any on there now and then again same thing really just apply circular motions to blend that out. I'm just going to take a little bit more of that solvent off. You really don't want too much for the next layer of application. Okay. There we go, so just blending it out as smoothly as I can and as evenly as I can. So yeah, that's how you would add more layers. So you just need to make sure that you just apply the coloured pencil as evenly as possible and then apply less and less solvent. And then you can go in and add your finer details at the end. And I'm actually going to show you how you would do that, how you would add in the finer details and what sort of look you're going to get. So I've got a sharp pencil. This is just the white Prismacolor pencil. Just for the purpose of this tutorial, all I'm doing is just showing you how these white strands are going to come up against the actual blended out section. And again, I have waited 15 minutes for the circle to dry before I've gone in and done that. So you can see, you know, it's quite effective. I'll just add a little bit more colour down so you can see how it compares to the actual circle. So you can see how that works. So lastly, when you're using a pencil blend, solvent, paint thinner, whatever it is that you're using, you're going to want to know obviously how to clean your brushes off. And I know a lot of artists just get their paintbrush and they dip it in their solvent and then just swivel it around and clean off the residue like that. I actually like to just get my paintbrush, I like to just run it under some warm water and then I use some baby shampoo or, or just some dish soap to actually clean off the bristles and then I actually leave it to dry overnight. So now what I'm going to do is just quickly show you some work that I have actually done using the solvent. So all of these animal drawings were done using a solvent and I also used Prismacolor pencils as well with these drawings. So this is just an owl eye and feather study. This is um, a dog. I did this with Prismacolor pencils and solvent. Then I did this cat eye study and fur. And again, I used that with Prismacolor pencils and solvent. 
And then I did this drawing of my rabbit, Jet, again using Prismacolors and solvent. So you can see how well solvents work with animal drawings. Really, really lovely, lovely look that you're going to get. Very realistic as well. Brilliant contrast colours, vibrancy with the Zestit pencil blend or any solvent that you want to use. So anyway, that is it for this tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and found this helpful. If you've never used a solvent before, give it a go. And I really hope that this video will help you to just try a solvent out for the first time. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I will be back again soon. Bye everyone.